All right, any questions on the diuretics? Okay. Uh, one that you're going to deal with a lot is increasing internal urethral sphincter tone. You're gonna spay a lot of dogs, okay? A certain number of those dogs will develop hormone responsive urinary incontinence, okay? And you'll recall that the internal sphincter is smooth muscle and has primarily alpha receptors in it. Estrogen is responsible for maintaining that alpha receptor tone. If you get rid of estrogen, you downregulate the alpha-1 receptor, all right? And it doesn't occur necessarily immediately after spay. The dog may come in years later and have a problem. All right, we have two treatments that we use to return that tone. Since it's an underlying estrogen deficiency, <coughs> we can give estrogens. And we used to use diethylstilbestrol and Premarin, things of this sort, but finally we have an approved product. In Curin uh, is estriol, uh, and it upregulates those alpha receptors to return um, continence. There's a loading dose schedule where you give it daily for one to two weeks to prime the receptors, and then you taper it down to the lowest dose that controls the problem, sometimes uh, as little as once weekly. Uh, I should have mentioned here, at the doses used, it is a safe product, but remember dogs are unusually prone to estrogen-induced in, uh, bone marrow suppression. So overdoses can cause severe bone marrow suppression, anemia, this sort of thing, yes? So when would you use estrogen over Proin? Uh, <clears throat> okay, Proin phenylpropanolamine is the other option that we have. It's an alpha agonist, so it works directly on the internal sphincter. Uh, the drawback there is it has to be given one to three times a day. So in answer to your question of when you use one over the other, I think to a large degree it's owner compliance. Uh, the the, the pro-in you're going to have the owner giving it three times a day and it's really hard for owners to do TID medications. The other thing is, by the way though, the good side is not all dogs require uh, TID administration. Some you can get by with on twice a day, uh, even once a day. Uh, we, my, my wife and I adopted a little uh, Cocker Spaniel that had this, but she, was, she wasn't incontinent unless it rained. I don't know if I've told you this story. We had a pet door, but if it was raining, she wouldn't use the pet door. <laughs> She'd just hold it until she started to dribble. So I'll, we'd just give her the, the PPA whenever it was raining. <laughs> But uh, uh, largely it's compliance, and this is a little cheaper when you get down to the maintenance therapy than, than the phenylpropanolamine is. Okay. Now the flip side of that is induction of micturition. Why do we want to cause the bladder to contract? Uh, we'll do this sometimes post urethral obstruction, we've got the blocked dog or more commonly the block cat uh, and the bladder has been overstretched and has some issues so we uh, sometimes help it pharmacologically to empty. Uh, probably more so we use it in upper motor neuron bladders. Uh, remember you, you kind of got two scenarios depending on where the spinal lesion is as to whether you get a lower motor neuron bladder or an upper motor neuron bladder. Lower motor neuron bladders, uh, there's really minimal sphincter tone and they tend to overfill and dribble and incontinence is really a problem. Upper motor neuron bladders are the opposite. They have hypertonic sphincters. Uh, so it's very hard to get uh, an animal with an upper motor neuron bladder to urinate. They'll have sometimes what's called reflex dysnergia, which I mentioned on the next slide. Reflex dysnergia is where you know the bladder will start to contract and all of a sudden the sphincter contracts down and they stop it. And so they're going back and forth on these little small squirting uh, urinations and uh, it's really difficult to get them to enter the, 
empty the whole bladder. So upper motor neuron bladders and reflex dysnergias are uh, indications. Two things, we want to relax the internal and external sphincters and then also cause the bladder to contract. Um, <clears throat> I added this little note, you should know this already. The internal sphincter is smooth muscle and has alpha receptors to control tone. The external sphincter is skeletal muscle, okay? So we use an alpha blocker to relax the internal sphincter. It's kind of clinician preference. You, you can use uh, prazosin or phenoxybenzamine as an alpha blocker. <laughs> now, uh, one aspect, phenoxybenzamine is a non-competitive antagonist. Uh, so that means it cannot be reversed. So it has to wear off. So um, a lot of clinicians now are using the prazosin as a safer alternative over the phenoxy. But truthfully, if you dose it correctly, phenoxy is usually okay. So clinician preference. Uh, one study actually showed ace promazine was better than either of these in relaxing the internal sphincter. Uh, but you've got the sedation side effect. So it depends on your circumstances. In uh, a hospital scenario where you're not worried about the sedation, ace promazine is a really good drug for this. Uh, but outpatient, you're not likely to use it. Now the external sphincter, anything that relaxes skeletal muscle, but mostly we use the benzodiazepines. Uh, diazepam is the primary one we give, uh, <clears throat> but in ICU, when we do this, we'll very commonly give IV midazolam. Uh, but again, any muscle relaxer technically would do it. And then we have bethanicol to contract the bladder. Uh, it's a muscarinic agonist. It's not totally selective on the bladder. It will affect the GI tract. Uh, and in overdoses, you, uh, it's, it's similar to an organophosphate toxicity through muscarinic effects. But um, GI-wise, uh, it's not uncommon to see them defecate after you give bethanicol, and they may hypersalivate. Hard to tell in the small animals. They tend to, to uh, swallow, so you don't see the drooling as much as I do in, in say, horses or cows where I've done this. All right. They make a sub-Q form. Uh, all of these uh, urinary orals take about 30 minutes to an hour to have an effect. Uh, the injectable bethanicol is much more rapid, but never give it IV because of the strong muscarinic effect. So you combine these two, we give an alpha blocker plus uh, uh, a skeletal muscle relaxant to relax the sphincters, and then we give bethanicol uh, to cause the bladder to contract. Probably the sphincter contract relaxation is the more important of the two, but you'll see them used uh, in conjunction. Now one note, particularly I said we use these sometimes in over-distended bladders. Uh, <clears throat> there is a problem in the efficacy of the botanical in this regard because uh, of the way uh, contraction is propagated in the bladder. You get an initial firing from the muscarinic receptor, but it propagates along tight junctions in the smooth muscle. And when you've overstretched the bladder, those tight junctions aren't communicating all that well. So it's harder to get a coordinated bladder contraction when they've been really, really stretched like a lot of these dogs and cats have been. So. There, uh, we'll sometimes leave an indwelling urinary catheter in for a day or two so the bladder stays in a contracted state and allows those tight junctions to come back in contact with each other. And then the botanical is more likely uh, to have a benefit. And just a common sense thing, if you're manually expressing these animals, and a lot of these, again, they don't have that strong urge, especially spinal animals. You have to put um, pressure on the abdomen to start the urination process to generate the pressure that they'll urinate. And uh, one of my pet peeves is, is people sometimes don't think. Uh, 
they, uh, they'll, they'll use the bladder meds, but they won't put them anywhere close to where they're trying to express the bladder. All right, so you might as well take advantage of these. So I like to give the oral products like 30 minutes to an hour before I try to express them. Uh, the injectable midazolam, I'll give just a few minutes before I try to express them. So we're, we're kind of making it easier uh, to express the bladder pharmacologically timed with the manual expression. 